everyone, Mr. Merkic here, and today I'm going to show you how to update your Discord bot to the latest version of Discord.net, which is 1.0, um, because a lot of things change and it's not as simple as it used to be, uh, I mean like in order to connect and stuff. Um, so I'm just going to show you how to update or convert over. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new Visual Basic project, um, I'll call it Discord YouTube. And you might be wondering, I'm now using Visual Studio uh, 2017 team. And that is just because uh, Discord 1.0 will only install on 2017 for me. Uh, you can go ahead and try it on your version. If you get an error, um, something along the lines of Netcore. Um, I'm not sure if it's even fixable. I didn't even try. I just got 2017 and it's working. Um, I don't like using it. You can see it's so slow just to create a project. Um, I don't know if it's slow for me, but 2013 is super quick. Um, so yeah, I don't like using this, but it's the only way that I can use 2017 um, for the discord.net. So if you have that problem, just download that one as well and you should be good. Uh, so first things first, just like usual, we want to go over to tools, uh, go to NuGet package manager and manage the solution. And once we're on this, we want to click on browse and we want to search for discord.net and make sure you've ticked include pre-release because there's one thing on here that uh, we do need that isn't official, officially released yet. So of course we want discord.net, make sure it's version 1.0.1. .1. We don't want the 9.6 one, uh, we want 1.0 and above. So click the project and install it to your project. Now it does take me a while to install that so while that's uh, going to install that for me, what we're going to do is open up 2013. Actually, let me just uh, accept this install. So we'll let that do that, and we'll quickly open 2013, and we'll go ahead and look at like the previous project that we did. And um, because what I'm going to do is try and make it as similar as possible, uh, so you don't have to recode your whole bot. Uh, we'll just rewrite the small little base. And you can copy your on message function in and therefore you don't lose everything so it's nice and simple so we'll open the discord bot one up because I believe that was the YouTube one we used now we'll go and have a look everything seems so slow for some reason uh, right so here we got the discord bot now I don't care that I'm showing my token um, I'll just go and re change that after the video or something so anyway here's our source and what I mean is this is the on message function so I'm gonna try and keep it the same so you can copy the contents of the function over pretty much um, with all that the, and you might notice here this is how we connect um, so you got your token there and you, your token type and it's literally discord.connect so it's going to be a big change as you'll see um, so yeah I've been asked it a lot because some people can't figure it out and so what we'll do is we'll go and check what this is on percentage uh, it looks like it's still busy um, so there's not really much we can do while that's uh, installing apart from go and take a look back uh, in here so a few more things that changed, um, what we need to do is we don't we don't use the Discord client anymore, um, we use WebSockets and stuff to log in, also we have to install once this is done, uh, maybe we can see it now or is this frozen for us, we need to go down and install two more things um, which I'll show you in a second but they are li literally instant installs. Uh, snooze that. So I didn't really plan on this taking this long to install. So there we go, it's finally installed. So once that's done, we want to scroll down and we want to look for the UDP client, which is here. And this is what you need pre-release for. If you don't see it, in tick include, and we'll add this to our project as well. So then we got that, and you also need this WS4 net 
So you go down and install that as well. And there are the three things you need to install to your project before we can even start. So once that's done, you can close out of that now and go into the code side of things. So first things first, uh, what we want to do is make some imports. So once the code's loaded, uh, we'll just go to the top of the code and we we'll want to import Discord. And we also want to import Discord uh, WebSocket. Just like that. And now usually we declared uh, Discord client here. A little bit similar, we're going to say dim Discord as a Discord uh, socket client. And now in our form load, usually we'd have Discord dot connect but you see that doesn't exist anymore so what we're going to do is going to say discord is equal to a new discord socket client inside the brackets we need to create a new discord socket config and now all we need to do is use um, with two curly brackets and inside here we need to specify a few things so first things first we use a little dot uh, because there's multiple things that we need to use for this config. First things first is a web socket provider, and this is why we uh, imported the WS Fournet and the UDP client because they're going to be our providers. So the web socket provider is net.providers.ws4net.ws4provider.instance, and then we need to do the same for the UDP socket provider and it's similar it's just net.providers net.providers.udp client udp client provider dot instance and there's also a few other things you can add to the config um, like you can choose the message uh, cache size or say 50 and so on and for the last item you don't need a comma um, that's the last item in our config and then after that it's fairly simple, we'll just say uh, actually first things first, but make sure this form load is async because we need to uh, await for processes to do to complete and stuff, so we'll say await discord.login uh, async and we need to give that the token uh, but first of all we need to say token type dot bot and then give it our token then after that uh, we just want to say discord dot start async just like that now that should log us in and if we go back and look at our other project after we done the login we had this function here called on message um, obviously that we're going to do it a bit differently now so we're going to add a handler, but we're going to do that before we even start the login process. So we'll say add handler uh, discord dot message receive. Now this is where all the events are. If you want to add more events on your own, so that is going to be an address of let's say on message. We'll keep it the same. So now we'll go outside the form load sub and we'll say private async function and we'll call it on message and now what this needs is the message as a socket message and then that is going to be as a task just like that and now we'll end the function so inside here what's the problem oh it's because we're not awaiting at all um, so we'll go back and we'll quickly look at our old bot first things first we'll check if the message is from us uh, we're going to do it a little bit differently we're going to check if the message is from a bot and to do that we'll say if message dot source is equal to uh, a message source um, dot bot then we'll just let's say we'll ignore it ignore it because that message is from a bot and then else obviously this is not from a bot so we want to process it and it's just like before so we can copy it again we can check if it's a private message and all that kind of kind of thing um, 
but we'll just go in and do the same sort of thing so we'll have I don't want to copy it all because that's quite lengthy but you can copy all of it in you just need to change a few things uh, so message just like that if, if we have to paste that in there should be an error because we need to use now instead of message not message we we'll use message dot content um, and then you got whatever you want to do with the content but message dot content is now uh, the message so on, once you've done that you can't you need to use message dot content hopefully you remember to do that and then what you'll do is you'll say await uh, message dot channel dot send message async and then what you'll do in here is just send we'll actually we'll just send the message back to the user uh, so I'm not going to add all the commands in because that's quite long and the video is probably already long enough but what you'll do is you add all your code back and you will probably need to add an await or oh, it's already there but yeah you'll need an await before each message you send because that is a process and also don't forget message.content uh, just because that's a little thing that you'll get confused with once because you're not used to it but it's quite simple everything else is the same all the case all the commands if checked things like that keep it all the same so I'll leave that down to you we can start this up if we really want to uh, Visual Studio 2017 takes a while one another reason why I don't like it because now by now I'd already be on the program in 2013 but we'll go to discord I believe we got a test in server hopefully the token isn't changed and we'll just wait for our bot to come online so there you are, you see it's come online. So it's, this bot is just going to reply everything that we type. So we'll just say hi. And you can see it messaged us back hi. And it's really quick as well. One thing you probably should want to do, uh, because you can see we've closed it, but the bot's still online. So real quick, you want to copy the form load, just like that. Changed it to form closing change my base dot closing and then in here say await discord dot log out async and that should be good that should log you out instantly so that's all you need to know for that um, if you want more videos in 1.0 maybe covering embeds things like that all the nice new features it supports uh, just let me know and I'll probably make a new series or something like that um, so that's how you'd log in with 1.0 and how to set up event so you add the event here uh, and then add, make the function for the event uh, so it's fairly straightforward hopefully now you can make some cooler looking bots um, and that's it really if the video did help please be sure to leave a like and a comment and I'll see you next time